When two atoms form a chemical bond, the bond may result from atoms sharing electrons. In this case, it's referred to as a covalent bond. Another type of bond forms when one atom, with a strong attraction for electrons, encounters another atom which has a very weak attraction for its outer electrons. This results in a transfer of at least one electron from one atom to the other. Both atoms become charged particles called ions. And it is the electrostatic attraction between them that bonds them together, forming what is called an ionic bond. These principles can also be used to explain why substances have certain properties. Why, for example, metals are good conductors of electricity and It also explains why a metal can be flattened into thin sheets or drawn into long wires. Metallic elements are found on the left side of the periodic table. The electron configuration of many metals share a particular feature. Their outermost electrons are usually S orbital electrons. An S orbital is spherical in shape and its electrons can be found anywhere within its volume. When an orbital is involved in a bond with any other atom, this bond can be oriented in any direction. In contrast, an atom requiring one more electron to fill its outer p orbitals can only form a bond in one specific direction. A second important characteristic of outer level electrons is that they are very loosely held by the nucleus. These two factors lead to a specific type of bonding between atoms of metals. Consider an outer s orbital electron associated with a specific atom. It can be found anywhere within the space defined by the orbital. Since the electron is so loosely held and can be located quite far from the nucleus, it can come under the influence of the nucleus of an adjacent atom. This electron originally belonged to this atom, but simply wandered off and has been captured by another atom. Which means that in a series of steps, it might wander from atom to atom throughout the entire volume of the metal. This freedom of movement is not limited to the outer electron of just one atom. Since each of the metal atoms has at least one outer s orbital electron, and these electrons all enjoy the same freedom of movement as the electron we have just considered, the whole system behaves like a series of fixed positive charges in a sea of negatively charged electrons. The atoms are bound to each other by this sharing arrangement. Even though the electrons being shared do not remain in a specific area. This explains why metals are good conductors of electricity. When a potential difference is applied, the outer loosely held electrons drift towards the positive end. Metals are also good conductors of heat the heat increases the kinetic energy of the electrons and the atoms. Again, since the outer electrons are held loosely, they increase the rate at which this energy is transferred to adjacent nuclei and electrons. 
There is another major difference between the bonds present in a metal and those in a substance like diamond. In a diamond, the carbon atoms are bonded to each other in very precise directions. This makes a diamond hard and inflexible. Instead of bending or deforming, it will split or cleave along a precise path. Metals, on the other hand, consist of atoms which are attracted to each other, but in which the bonds are not directional. As a result, it is possible for metal atoms to slide over each other. This makes it possible to press metal into thin sheets or stretch into thin wires. Metals and diamonds are not the only substances which consist of a network of atoms. When chlorine and sodium react, by attracting one electron from sodium to the chlorine, two ions are formed which are held together by electrostatic attraction. In reality, when this reaction takes place, many ions of sodium and chlorine will be involved. Since all of the resulting ions are charged, they will attract ions of the opposite charge and repel ions of the same charge. This causes them to orient in a very specific way. The relative size of the two types of ions plays a role in determining the shape of the crystal as they pack together. For sodium chloride, the resulting shape is that of a cube, whether the crystal is tiny or huge. The strong forces of attraction between the ions and the crystal have a strong bearing on the properties of the substance. The fact that the ions are held in a fixed position makes ionic solids hard and inflexible. They tend to shatter when dealt a sharp blow. Since they have no loosely held electrons, ionic solids tend to be insulators rather than conductors of electricity. For the same reason, they do not conduct heat well and must be heated to a high temperature before they melt. When in a molten state, the ions are free to move about. So the substance becomes an excellent conductor of electricity. There are many other substances that consist of ions. In each case, the ionic crystal has a unique shape, which is determined by the relative size and charge of the ions involved. This shows, once more, that the seemingly endless list of compounds that exist need not be studied one by one if we take the time to understand electron arrangement and bonding.